Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I make these two fused glass part sheets. Welcome to Rocket Rose Art, my name is Jeff. Today we're going to make a couple of part sheets. If you find you like this video, please subscribe, turn on your notifications so you can see more and share it and like it and all that. If you've got some comments, I'd love to hear from you. If you've got any suggestions, also please put them in the comments below. Now this project can be done in a microwave kiln. Obviously, you'll just need to adjust your size to suit the kiln. Now I love part sheets. I think they're very versatile and you can let your imagination run wild. There are many techniques, but in this one, I'm just going to show you a technique that uses primarily frit. The two pieces that I'll be making are ones that I have developed and I call them garnet gravels and blue ponds. The part sheets I'll be making here just use opal white as the base and then we'll use coarse and fine frit to create the patterns on the top. After we fuse these sheets I'll show you the final result and we'll talk a little bit more about incorporating these into your projects. As usual I use Bullseye 90 COE for all of my glass and frit and uh, I'll be firing it on the thin fire paper. Other than the frit and glass that you'll need, you'll also need a sieve for sieving the fine frit and a spoon and small brush and maybe a toothpick for creating the patterns in the top. Now these patterns I've just created through trial and error. And if you're going to use part sheets in your projects, that's what I would suggest. Create a whole range of different patterns. Keep the ones you really like. Keep the notes on them and um, put them away for safekeeping so you don't have to worry about reproducing them later on. Now, the, these pieces that I'll make are just demo size. They're only going to be 50 by 100 millimeters. You would, of course, make it whatever size suits the project you have in mind. And, of course, the kiln you're going to use. I'm going to assemble these so you can see exactly how I do it. During the assembly I'll show you the colours that I'm using and I am going to skip the cutting step that I normally have because all you're going to cut is the background piece. At the end of this, um, after they come out of the kiln, I'll show you the final pieces and we'll talk a little bit more about incorporating these into your projects. For this part sheet I'll first be using some fine opal jade green. I will then use some coarse transparent yellow. Then I'll use some coarse transparent red. And then finally I'll use some opal red. I've cleaned the glass and it's sitting on a couple of small pieces just so it makes it easier for me to pick it up when I want to move it. So the first thing to do is to apply some of the Jade green, so I'll just get a little bit of that in my sieve. And then I'll just slowly sift that over until I've got what I think is a reasonably good even colour. Okay, I think that's right. Now I'll just recover what's been spilt and then I'll come back and we'll do the yellow. So now we're going to put on some yellow. And the way I'm going to do that is just simply, because it's coarse, I'll just put, simply put some in my hand. And I want a reasonable sprinkling of that over the surface of that. As random as I can possibly get.
Now I do want some pattern to this, so I will clump some in little spots. So I'll recover what's spilt and then we'll be back to do the next layer. Now I'm going to put on the transparent red and I'm not going to put a lot of this on. Um, it's going to be only a small amount because I don't want it to flood the piece. Unfortunately with my twitch I did bump that. Now I have fixed it. So now I'm going to try and put on that opal red and we could end up in a mess here if I twitch again. This For this part sheet I'm going to be using three layers of opal glass, they'll be turquoise blue and these are all fine, then yellow, then Egyptian blue. Now I won't be talking while I'm sifting these because I am going to put on a mask. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to use a cap off a bottle and a toothpick and I'm going to try and add some interesting texture into this piece and hopefully that'll bring up the colours from the bottom layers to the top and uh, give us a really satisfying pattern. So we'll put those in the kiln shortly and we'll see how they come out. Now I've taken the pieces out of the kiln and cleaned them up and they fused up quite well. You can see this piece here that I call Garnet Gravels. I hope you can see why I call this piece here Garnet Gravels. It gives me a sense of looking down onto a bit of gravel scattered with beautiful garnets. This one here, the Blue Ponds, reminds me of an aerial view of Blue Ponds in a marshland.
So what do you see in these? I'm sure everybody will have a different opinion. Please tell me in the comments. Now you can use these in pretty much any project you like. Just pick the area that best suits the project and then cut it to the relevant size. Just keep in mind you want to make the edges as square as possible so that the glass that butts up to it will be in full contact. If you don't, fusing it may introduce some problems. Don't forget I'll be showing you in a later video how to make these into cabochons. If you want to see more videos at the moment, you'll find some up here and down here. Please don't forget to subscribe and please, if you've got any comments or suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Until the next video, I'll say bye for now.